<laughs> Larry Griswold, uh, elected official uh, from Elgin, is going to give a, a presentation of some actual events. These aren't fictitious, but these are actual events that happened to him and uh, Jeff. Uh, thanks to Bob and some of these stories. So, Larry, take, take over. Uh, the article that was passed around, I didn't have very many of them. I ran out of ink last night, but I didn't know I was going to talk. But it was an article that was actually printed in the Kershaw County Chronicle. And it was in response to a letter from Councilman Jimmy Jones, who called the Kershaw County Patriots Nazis. That said that we didn't deserve to be called Patriots, that we were actually Nazis. So I got a little upset about it, because I was a almost a 30-year veteran in the Marine Corps. And so I took a picture of myself in front of my I Love Me wall plaques and, and uh, posted it on the paper and wrote this article. And it talks about Jimmy Jones was considered me a patriot because he talked about patriots and those who were like World War I and World War II had served their country. And I, I went and said that uh, according to Jimmy Jones that I was a patriot because I am, am, am a veteran. And I went on into this thing and talked about what the dictionary says, what a patriot really is. And a patriot is a citizen who stands up for his country. And so that's how it started this thing. And then I went and told the story about the like button that took place on the Kershaw County Patriots Facebook page. And, and um, Corey had written, or posted an article, and a girl named Patty Motley posted it on the Kershaw County Facebook page. And Jeff clicked the like button underneath the article. And the article was not about killing cops and, and all this other stuff. It was a, a thought-provoking article to make you think, when is enough enough? Tyranny. When is enough? When the Nazis packed up all the Jews, it was too late for them to say something after they'd been taken off to the camps. That's what the article was about. Well, the Kershaw County Patriots were very successful in beating John Spratt. We went to work with York County in the 5th Congressional District, and we worked with uh, Mick Mulvaney, and uh, we worked with uh, Nikki Haley, and, and we were very successful. Of course, Kershaw County is the home of Vincent Shaheen, who was running for governor. Mm -hmm. And if you know anything about Kershaw County, you'll find that the Shaheen family really has a noose uh, around the people, the county, they really control it. Uh, and so we were successful, and if you are a political leader and you're of the opposite party, you want to get rid of your opposition. So you're going to want to get rid of the Kershaw County Patriots. And if you remember at one time, all at once, all the Tea Parties across the nation were being attacked by the Democratic Party. And this is the same time this happened. When Jeff clicked that like button on the TV, or on the, on the screen on the computer, they were watching. And if you go to the Kershaw County Patriot Facebook page, and you go into the friends and see who the friends are, you'll see Sheriff Matthews as a friend on our, it's open to anybody. He's on there. And he comes out and attacks us and says that, uh, he puts the county on high alert, gets with uh, the uh, police department in Elgin, gets with the police department in Candom, and has the county sheriff department all on high alert because there's right-wing extremists in Kershaw County. Terrorists. Terrorists. And here I am, a veteran of 28 plus years in a Marine and being called a terrorist in a, in a right wing extremist, I didn't take very kindly to that. So, this then led into TV, WIS interviews, uh, and it escalates. And to where I got the chair of the Republican Party picking up the phone and calling me, who was a president of a precinct Republican Party in, in, in Kershaw County and wanting Jeff, the co-chair, to step down. And so they have a vote over the telephone, and I had to be one of the individuals on that phone to vote. And I asked the county chair what rules and regulations he was going by to remove somebody from a co-chair billet that was equal to his. He couldn't give me an order. And they called an attorney up, uh, an attorney from the I don't know, constitutional attorney somewhere <coughs> in the state of South Carolina. Something happened anyway. They, by Robert's Rules of Order, they proposed, a, 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 had a motion, and voted to remove Jeff from the Kershaw County co chair Republican seat. They eliminated the position. There you go. But anyway, I was 
That started this whole thing. Jimmy Jones then starts calling us Nazis in the paper, which is when I started to write the article. Um, as I, this is all materialized, I'm starting to take notes and I'm starting to realize that our county chair, Republican chair, was a puppet to Vincent Shaheen. He was worried about Vincent, what he was saying. He said, Vincent says he's going national with this thing. Well, we took it to national anyway. It went on the internet and it went all over the place. But he was worried about that. He wanted to please Vincent Shaheen. And that was what the whole thing was. The sheriff, in the meantime, was telling businesses that were members of our Tea Party that they had to get out of our party, uh, our Tea Party, because they were putting pressure on them. The county sheriff would be sitting outside the business. Or they'd be inside the business telling them, you need to get out of the Kershaw County Patriots. Pressure was applied to people. So we went from 260 people down to about three in a matter of a couple weeks. And, and so literally we were shot down by our county county leadership, our, our your sheriff. Ex, and your ex-DEA agent. And our ex-DEA agent. And, and, and Jeff can definitely lead in a little more what's going on there. But our sheriff claims to be a Republican. And when he was in Lexington County, he never voted in a precinct primary for a Republican. He always voted for a primary as a Democrat. So, always, so he's saying that he's a Republican, came from Lexington County, moves to Kershaw County, gets $140,000, is that right, Jeff? $140,000 to run for Outside a sheriff. Outside of the county, now he is our sheriff. Uh, and if you haven't paid any attention to what's going on in Kershaw <laughs> County, I understand we all have problems in our counties, but we have random roadblocks every day somewhere in the middle of nowhere and and they're stopping it it's called a safety check and and there's what happens is your car stops the individual also comes up there and says can i see your papers please sound familiar kind of sounds like another foreign country doesn't it you know licensed all stuff the other cop walks around and is peeking in the windows to see if you have anything that they can arrest you for mm -hmm. and then if they don't have can't find anything there then they let you go in the meantime you were stopped for being a good citizen and doing nothing wrong, and you're put into this position. So that's we got some issues, and I'd rather turn this over to Jeff if I could to tell a bit sure. more detail. Jeff, yeah, but Jeff is kind of like the, the hero. He got a hero. comic article he, written out in the paper with him shooting, a, <laughs> shooting his foot uh, with a pistol, and, and it's just we've just been having a real mess in, in Kershaw. Oh, I, I like my my uh, cartoon Ariel. Not many people get a cartoon from Ariel, and I, I, I got it framed now, and it's beautiful. A smoke coming off with free speech on it and the whole nine yards. But yeah, they, the, the Republican Party, the chairman called me and asked me to resign. And I, I said, oh, for what? For hitting the like button? And he, he said, well, this is going to hurt the party. I said, no. You going after me hurts the party because you're not standing for your principle. Yeah, you know, what does your creed say? Your creed says that you're going to stand for individual rights. And I, I told him, no, I would not do that. I'm not going to bow down and, and compromise my principles just to satisfy, just for political expedience. So. Anyway, they, they, they eliminated the co-chair position. I've been alienated out of the party. Um, but uh, besides that, that the, the sheriff has really got us concerned. Um, as, a for, as a former DEA special agent, and I've done a little bit of research into this, uh, it, it seems to be a trend across the United States now and fully almost a quarter of the sheriffs now are, are uh, former or retired DEA agents. And it, it looks like it's a concerted effort in order to uh, kind of infiltrate the federal government into local affairs. And if you go back and you look at DEA training, you start to find out that the mentality is that everybody Every citizen is a potential criminal waiting to get out. And their mentality also uses the tactics of uh, intimidation and, and uh, 
massive use of force. And we're seeing that very thing in Kershaw County right now. As soon as Matthews came in, he, he managed to get the, the county council to uh, allocate $350,000 for a four-man DUI traffic unit. At the same time, he went around the back door uh, to the government, federal government for a grant of another $190,000 for two more officers. So now he's got a six-man task force. Uh, also, he signed many agreements with, with outside agencies to include the South Carolina Highway Patrol. So now what has taken place in Kershaw County is between the traffic unit and the highway patrol, they're running random checkpoints throughout the county at any given time of the day, all day, all night. And at any time, you're sub subject to be, go through one of these checkpoints. And of course, it's just a massive fishing expedition, catching all the fish in the sea just to catch a few. Now, he touts right now, he's touting that uh, this new DUI traffic unit has already begun to save lives. Last year there was 14 deaths in Kershaw County related to, to alcohol, drugs, and that kind of thing like that on highways. This year there's only been, now 2011, 2010 when there were 14, 2011 he's saying that they saved four lives. Well, there's 62,000 people, residents in Kershaw County, not including visitors. So if we do a little math, that's 0.00623% of the population that died on highways due to drunk drivers and all. Well, that seems like a very minuscule, it's not a massive, like everybody's out drinking and driving. It's not as big of a problem as he's made it out to be. But yet, <coughs> his, his DUI traffic unit started in July, and between July and January, he says he saved four lives. But we spent 400 and almost $500,000 to do it, plus you're infringing on the Fourth Amendment. Well, the same nonsense that they say when they talk about spending more money for education if it'll just save one child or one life yeah. which is nonsense because it's probably caused yeah. more lives than it uh, yeah. can save. It, that's exactly right and, and they always use that that heart strain ploy in order to get what they want but what we're seeing right here is uh, absolute shredding of the fourth amendment and then uh, another thing he's doing is the you know the leadership, whatever the leadership is doing, that all flows down the hill. So now, we're, I can give you 10 or 12 of these incidents. A friend of mine, driving down the road, upstanding individual, doesn't drink, doesn't smoke, doesn't do anything like that, and doesn't talk on the cell phone while he's driving. <laughs> so he, he gets a phone call. He pulls off on the side of the road to talk on the cell phone. Next thing he knows, one of Matthew's investigators, plainclothes investigators, pulls up behind him. Gets out, comes up, demands to see his driver's license and registration proof of venture. Well, this guy says, what? I'm on the side of the road talking on the telephone because I don't want to drive and cause dangerous, and you're going to harass me by asking me for my driver's license and all. The discussion got a little bit heated. He was asked to uh, step outside the vehicle. As soon as he got out of the vehicle, he was placed under arrest for disorderly conduct. He was carried to the jailhouse. He spent the night in jail. The next morning, they let him out on a PR bond, and it, and they were talking. A friend of his and he he were talking to the arresting officer, and the arresting officer says, "You cannot talk to me like that." But I'm dropping all the charges. You agree? This happens over and over and over again in that county now. 
This is a dangerous situation. So I'm dropping all the charges, but if you ever talk to me like that again, I will put you in jail. Okay? Exactly. Uh -huh. okay. We've had, we've had female, we, I, I, I can give you the names of three females that, it, that have happened. I can give you the names of other men that it's happened to. Doing absolutely nothing wrong. And, uh, yeah, that's the thing to point out, everyone, is that they don't get charged. It's not like they, oh, these people are criminals and they actually get charged with some kind of real crime. They get charged with disorderly conduct because there was nothing else to charge them with, and they didn't just bow down and lick the boots. Is what it comes That's down exactly to. What it's what they, if these people were real criminals, they would have charged them with something else. But there's no third party not. witness. It's just the officer's right. word that you were being disorderly. Right. right. And, hey, I, bro, and I think I'll can the governor do anything? But the governor can the governor do something about it? Uh, the governor could probably just say something. The sheriff is the ultimate authority in the county. Yeah. But can the government get out of it? No. 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 Can't. No. no. Only, only person can do it. And recall in South Carolina, Carolina is impossible. And there is no recall statute. There is no recall statute. That's one thing that's got to change. Yeah. Oh, well, somebody go ahead and run against to beat him. Yeah. He will. He uh, the way he's going now, he will be a one-term right. sheriff. He's had but one year. Got three years. He's got three more years. He just did his first year. Jeff, let me let me contrast for everyone. The situation to, to help highlight how bad it is over there in Kershaw County. The same situation on my end. Um, when I posted the, the link to this article and I had stuff to say about the article, um, once it started making news, I picked up the phone and I called Sheriff Meadows because I'm on a first name basis with him. And I said, hey, I just want to make sure that you understand where what I where I'm coming from and what I mean. And, and, and he said, oh, I don't, you know, you got a right freedom of speech. Um, uh, the, the, the title of the article was very incendiary. Yeah, God bless yeah. Lexington County. On purpose. Um, I, his, uh, art, the yeah. guy who wrote the article did that on purpose. Yeah. To, but the content of the article, if you read the article, it, 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 that, that what is the key? You had to read the article. Right. Right. Yeah, it just blow up over the time. And, um, you know, and, and Sheriff Metz, he says, hey, you know, I, 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 I know you're not condoning you know, his violence against anyone. I, it's not a big deal. It's not a big deal. So the way the reaction that, that Jeff got versus the reaction that I got is indicative of how Gestapo esque yes. um, that uh, it, sheriff is. The, the, the thing about it is you got to understand the mentality of a federal DEA agent. Like I said, it, it's that everybody's a potential criminal. And They've been trained. No, everyone in, is a criminal. They just haven't gotten caught yet. Yeah, and the, the, they've been trained in how to how to move around your to trick you into giving up your constitutional rights. They've been also trained in massive use of force, and that's what we're seeing out there. We're we're seeing a massive use of show of force and thuggery against uh, citizens there, who now. Or you can go out to Kershaw County now at nine o'clock at night. It's like a ghost town. Businesses are, are being affected out there, and what, Lord knows what it's going to do for tourism. What it, what it, they ought to make a commercial. It ought to have police lights and everything. Come visit us in Kershaw County, police state of South Carolina. Matthew's in charge. <laughs> it would be wonderful to see something like that. County Council, this man swore an oath to uphold and defend the Constitution. He is not doing that. County Council swore an oath to uphold and defend the Constitution. If you had a nickel for everyone who swore to uphold the Constitution. Yeah. What are they going to do? They're going to continue their thug action until people stand up and say no. And just like, just like the, uh, Ricky did, when, when he was confronted and he questioned them, he, he took the dying in jail. That's the same thing we do. We're already planning our tactics against this. We're going, we're going to, to do the same thing they're doing to us. Harass them. When, you, when we find out there's a checkpoint, we're going to have a mass of people that go back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. We're going to stop. 
put somebody down the block with a sword. <laughs> I also got plans. There, I found a company out of Atlanta for 50 cents a pot. They give me a yard sign, and it's going to say, safety checkpoint ahead, detour. <laughs> Just play it anywhere. And whenever, whenever we go, I've got a group of young people that are all uh, anywhere from 17 up to about 23 that have a network. You know how these young people are. And as soon as they see a checkpoint, it's going to be blam. It goes on to a Facebook, a Twitter, and those people. Well, go by, get the signs, and go around there and put... I'll give you a five-gallon bucket. You can put donations on it right next to that sign. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're, we're really having a problem over here. Yeah, you heard no proverb about the guy, the guy who got a, a load of moonshine in the trunk, and, and uh, he comes up to a checkpoint. And he said he doesn't know what he's going to do, so he tells his buddy in the passenger seat, he says, grab that jar of water in the floorboard, and it was water. Grab that jar of water in the floorboard and go running out across that field. And as soon as he did, every damn cop out there followed him, and he drove right through the checkpoint. <laughs> 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 Jeff, well, another thing you can do, what Lexington County does, they publish where the checkpoints are going to be, right. and when and where, so you can get your to your paper and make an ad, too. Yeah, they're supposed they to. Make you take they're it. actually supposed to do that anyway, but they're not doing that until y'all come. And I tell y'all, Corey Norris, he went immediately to the sheriff, and he's on the sheriff's advisory council with me. And we're both sitting there with the sheriff's office and the sheriff's office. And he's going to be in the sheriff's in, in our county does the check -in. So if you can get to your paper, cost you very little money, post that too. Yeah. Um, what I get, uh, he, Sheriff Matthews knows he's got a public relations problem now in Kershaw County. And because of that, he's now going on the defensive. And he's going to hold a series of town hall meetings. <coughs> the first one's going to be there on the 21st over in uh, uh, Lugolf Middle School, right there in Lugolf. Um, we plan to have some very tough questions for him. He's going to arrest you for it. Uh, what other public law he's going to have there? <laughs> he's going to arrest you for getting up there. Hey, he did. And one time, an American Legion was having him come to speak. And what he told the, the head of the American Legion was that you are not going to allow any Tea Party people in there. Now, otherwise, I'm not coming. He and brought three deputies with him. Huh? He brought three deputies yeah, he brought with him. Three deputies with him to make sure. Sure. Secret they, search. They can be arrested. So, <laughs> this, this first town hall meeting, that we're going to have a mass of people there. I think you um, should go to him on the day of his daughter's wedding and ask for favors. <laughs> <laughs> But anyway, that's our story over in Kershaw County. We're, you know, Larry said he's blown up our our Kershaw County Patriots group. They were even scared to come to the meeting because of fear that they might be arrested. Ought to be waiting to get them to the lawsuit against them. We're, we're fighting him all the time, fighting the county council. Yeah, I know. You know, if you guys want to come over and help or have fun, <laughs> come on over. I'll be po posting the event on uh, Facebook, of course, and we'll spread it around. I'll be there. And, uh, anyway, thanks. I I'm glad we came over. We won't, we'll won't. we try not to make it too long before we come again. It takes two mules and a passport to get here. <laughs> and, uh, we appreciate it. It's good meeting you guys, and thanks a lot. Let's get Jeff. Well, enjoy the meeting. Thank you. You're a good speaker. Well, not really. You did a good speaker, though. Mr. Wa I saw Mr. Watermaker up here. I wanted to see if he needed to talk to him. And he said, hey, this guy's right on target with this thing. And he thinks, when's the last time you heard a compliment like that that you were a good speaker? Oh, uh, my mom said that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, 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 I always make you a